Okay. What is nature plus? We like to think about nature as somewhere peaceful and friendly and luxurious. And we tend to see ourselves as harmless, innocent creatures. But nature plus nuclear power, nature plus plastic accident, nature plus oil spill, another accident? Are these really accidents? Do we have to be always responsible for these accidents? If history is repeating, it's only because we are allowing ourselves to make the same mistakes again, that we're ignoring what we've done in the past and we just want to perpetrate. In fact, we have the freedom to make our own choices. We have the capacity to do whatever we set ourselves to do. And we have the responsibility to face the consequences of our acts. In fact, nature plus us, humans, often ends up in being nature minus. And we are damaging our environment and we are damaging ourselves. On the top, this is the BP oil spill in the Gulf of Mexico. You see millions of barrels of oil gushing in the Gulf. In the middle part, you see this is plastic debris accumulating in the ocean gyres. And the bottom image is Daiichi nuclear power plant leaking onto the Pacific. These three events have in common that they are man-made catastrophe, but they are controlled by natural forces. The wind, the surface currents, and the waves. I had the chance to cycle from Tokyo to Sendai along the coast, through Fukushima, making radioactivity measurements this winter. I have seen destruction. I have seen desolation. With the Protei team, we are preparing plastic measurements in the ocean. When the BPO spear happened, I left my dream job as a project leader in MIT in Boston to move to the Gulf of Mexico. I saw hundreds of skimmers battling the oil spill, exposing the health of cleaners. This is a simplified explanation of how an oil is spilled and skimmed at sea. We send this little boat to trust lines of clean in large patches of oil. We do not pay any attention about natural forces, but oil moves depending on wind, current and waves. Can we harness natural forces to remediate man-made accidents? Can we harness wind power? Can we learn from the agility of fishes? Can we develop remotely controlled robots that would have acute, acute senses and detect pollution in the environment? Can we develop remotely controlled robots that would have an acute sense and detect pollution in the environment? These long salamanders are called Proteus ingenius. These mysterious amphibians live in dark caves in northern Italy and Slovenia. They are blind but have adapted and developed super senses to strive in this hostile environment. Okay, I'll do it again. Can we develop remotely controlled robots that would have acute senses to detect pollutions in the environment? These long salamanders are Proteus ingenius. These mysterious amphibians live in dark caves in northern Italy and Slovenia. They are blind, but have adapted and developed super senses to strive in the hostile environment. Can we harness wind power with the agility of fishes and acute sensing capacity? The concept that started Prote is simple, to sail upwind and intercept oil drifting down the wind, using the power of nature to remediate man-made catastrophe. So we just wanted to know if that would be possible. So we simply took a small sailboat and we sailed it across the lake, uh, dragging something long and heavy. And when we were going straight, it was okay. But as soon as we started to go um, tacking upwind, then we observed two things. That we're dramatically losing pulling power. And second is that we're losing control over the direction, the steering capacity. And so we thought, how can we improve that system? So we just took a normal small sailing boat 
and brought the rudder from the back of the position from the back of the hull to the front. And what we've observed is that with a centimeter with a rudder of 14 centimeters, we were capable of actuating and controlling a four meter long um, um, payload behind the boat. So look at this boat more closely. As you can see, the rudder is at the very front of the hull. And what's going to happen here is that we are at the very last second will avoid an obstacle. As you can see, this boat has a very high maneuverability. We wanted to improve that system, and so this is an experiment in Korea. It's a small sailing boat packed with electronics and with a front and a back rudder. So we tried it in the water and we also had some collision and uh, de detection uh, sensors. But then we wanted to improve the system, so instead of just having a front and a back rudder, this one, this entire hull will curve. And we tried in the water and we had an amazing maneuverability. So this boat can really make a much steeper turn and you get the feeling of surfing. You really can carve into the water. And it had amazing and really excellent like sailing capacity when we're going up the wind. We kept making more iteration and that's a more uh, recent iteration of the same prototype, slightly shorter and with more powerful motors. And here you can see it evolving at low speed. As you can see, the turning radius is much is even steeper than the one with the front rudder. And observe the position of the sails. As the hull is curved, the position of the front sail, the jib, and the main sail are at different angles to the wind, which means that we are never stuck in irons, which means that we have constant pulling power, which is very useful to drag something on heavy. But then we wanted to know if we could scale up this experiment and build something with a much larger cell surface and with a very lightweight, simple, inflatable body. And hence it had a very small footprint in the water. And then we wanted to actuate this and make this system automatic. So we, this is in Rotterdam and that's uh, supported by the Institute for the Unstable Media and 300 backers on Kickstarter. And we built this uh, much larger uh, robot. We first want to try it in the water, and what we we'll observe is that the flexible structure uh, comp uh, how to say, compensates a lot of the wave motion. And a lot of the energy that is normally lost in being slammed by waves, well, we can use it for forward motion. So first we didn't have any weight at the bottom, so it was very unstable, but then we added a skin and ballast at the bottom of the keel, and some motors, and we dropped it in the water in uh, uh, Rotterdam's harbor. And so this is the first test of the machine, and um, yeah, it was it was pretty successful. Our robot was uh, we we got a lot of pulling power, and well, we still have a lot of work to do, but we really have good in like uh, evidence that this is the right direction. What we are doing, in fact, is an accelerated evolution of sailing technology from a front rudder to uh, to multiple rudders to the whole boat changes shape. At every prototype, our technology improves. Prote is now developed by a team of international um, sailors, makers, engineering, and scientists from all over the world. We are always designing, prototyping, uh, engineering, and as often as we can, we go and try our technology on the water. So this is in Kar. Um, it's a small uh, lake. This is in Seoul in Korea. Um, you see this uh, multiple uh, mast design. Well, it was very inspiring. It was made by our team in Mexico, but a few days after, Gabriela Levine um, took the design and actually made it. And she published it into an instructable that she published online. It's a website for inventors. And just a few days after, our, another team of young engineers in uh, uh, TU uh, Eindhoven in the Netherlands uh, replicated her experiment. Eventually, they published a much simplified design of Prote and published it on Instructable as well, and in about a week they had 10,000 views and they get many new friends. Um, we're also working with uh, children, this is in New York City, and we're also working with much older people, like this, uh, di this Mexican dinosaurus. Prote is developed as an open hardware uh, in an innovation network, and open hardware means that everybody is free to use, modify, and distribute our technology. And in exchange, we only ask for credit, so we just need the people to credit that it's a protect technology, and we ask people who make improvements to contribute back to the community online. For us, what is next is to build a one-meter protein that we will give to hobbyists, 
and you will be able to upgrade this simple remotely controlled vehicle with an Android phone so you could have actually an autonomous sailing robot that will be able to do in ramp to measurements. Then the next step for us will be to make a 6 meter version that a human being will be able to go inside it and sail around and the purpose of this is really to explore their maximum capacity of speed and, and basically use an uh, experimented seller as crash dummies. And eventually we will replace the human beings by battery, motor, sensors, microcontrollers to make autonomous uh, sailing robots to like, perform and, and pull a lot more uh, centrifuge payload. In terms of um, the range and technology we will have on board in terms of communication, we're starting right now with a simple remote controller but then we are adding now uh, more powerful antennas. And the next step will be to have a mobile phone and eventually we'd like to have Iridium uh, telephone will, which, which will give us a global coverage. We want our Prote to be uh, controlled through a simple web browser so any smartphone or any tablet or any computer will be capable of uh, controlling a Prote. And because we have so many people interested in the gaming industry, we would like to use Prote and be con we would like swarms of Prote to be controlled by gamers. At night, we are dreaming of Prote cleaning up oil spills. We are dreaming up of uh, Prote cleaning plastic in the ocean. We are dreaming of Prote studying coral reefs. And maybe you know, but more than 80% of our large fishes have been uh, long gone. They have disappeared. And you may know it. But more than 80% of our large fishes have gone. The belief that nature will always recover, whatever mistake we do, is a broken idea. We have entered a geological era called the Anthropocene. Anthropocene means that we humans have become the principal driver of the changes on Earth. May it be climate, the chemistry of our ocean, which species should live or die, the quality of our air, the water we drink. This is the tipping point, not only for our species, but for all species. The ocean covers more than 70% of the surface of our planet. More than half the human population live in cities near the ocean. The ocean are the future of our food, energy, transport and security. More than ever, it is our freedom to explore, our capacity to understand and our responsibility to protect life. Technology is our culture. We have been developing technology to dominate nature. We must now develop our culture to serve nature. We can no longer pursue the current destructive order of priorities. For money we develop technologies, commodify people, tapping in nature as a vulgar environmental stock. This is how the world really works. Without the environment, there's no life, no thing. Without humans, there's no technology, no culture. Money is only a form of technology that would not even exist without this supporting system. This is the real order of things. And we can make this choice now. What's the environmental cost of the survival of our species? How can we get out of this destructive spiral? I don't have the answer, but what I know is that without a human plus, there will be no nature plus. We can be this change, we must be this change. But what is a human plus? Is it an augmented human? Stronger? Faster? Taller? Is human plus going to be more arrogant, more violent and more greedy than the current human? Or is the human plus capable of serving a higher purpose than himself? Will the human plus be humble enough to contemplate the fact that there is something more valuable, more noble than his own life? Something that allows life itself to continue beyond our short existence? Can we develop a culture that explores, understands and protects life? The life on earth, the life in the ocean, where all life comes from in the beginning of times. Without a human plus, no nature plus will ever exist. Now that you are free, capable and responsible, will you make that choice? My question is, what kind of human plus do you want to be? Thank you.